Welcome back to my channel. It is great to see you all again. In this video, I want to share with you my initial impressions of the Skywatcher Star Venture GTI. Chances are, if you found this video, you were searching for this product so you already know what it is. But if you're just out casually browsing and you stumble across this video, let me quickly explain. This is a star tracker. This is a motor that you mount on a tripod and then you mount your camera on it. You align it with the stars. And then what it does is it counter rotates against the natural rotation of the earth to keep the stars that you're focusing on in view all the time. Now the Skywatcher comes in two versions. The first being for $640, the motor alone. At $699, you get a mounting kit that comes with a tripod and pier extension. Now, if you're just curious if that extra $59 is worth it for the tripod, um, I'll give you the short answer right now if you just wanna go off and watch other videos. And my opinion is no, it's not worth it. Just get a better tripod. Now, if you have nothing better to do, stick around for a few minutes and I'll explain why. So this is the pier extension. This would go on top of the tripod and then you would put the motor on the top. So if you needed an extra, what is this, nine inches, I think it is, um, this would give you an extra nine inches. Now, this looks like it could fit actually on most other tripods. So it might be useful. So this is the included tripod. Um, the little head section up here is fairly durable. Uh, everything else after that is pretty cheap, actually. Not very impressive. Uh, I guess my first complaint would be the legs, extending the legs. The screws, all right, they're on the inside. That's just aesthetically weird for me. I like for knobs and dials and tighteners on tripod legs to be accessible from outside the leg. Um, these are inside the leg. Uh, I really don't like that. Now, the height of this, I measured at, I believe it was 44 and three quarters inches. All right, this just sounds very cheap. There is this little platform right here. It is nice to be able to have a place to put your small accessories, but I find this tray to be overall very flimsy and I don't trust it, to be honest. Instead, what I'm gonna do is go with these tripod legs. These are a carbon fiber composite and AI powered designed by NASA. Now, I, <laughs> I'm messing with you. Uh, these are also cheap tripod legs. Uh, the cheap tripod legs that I got a very long time ago that I have beaten the heck out of. Uh, you can't get them anymore. Uh, they're called Ravelli. It was a cheap Amazon tripod. Uh, it's got the clamps that I like. Okay. This is what I prefer. This tripod has done well by me over the years. I have beaten on this thing to no end uh, to the point I actually have two. Uh, the second one is supporting one of my studio cameras right now. So these are not pretty. They are not impressive if you go to a meetup. You know, everyone wants to show off their Gitzos. I have friends that have Gitzos. They love it. If you want to pay a thousand dollars for a set of legs, knock yourselves out. Honestly, I'm not going to judge it's your money. However, if you don't want to pay a thousand dollars for a set of tripod legs, there are options on the market for under a hundred dollars, but will do the job. I have dropped these in rivers, lakes, salt water, kind of heavy, a little bit hard to hike with, but it's durable. I will also point out. It is more compact than the tripod that came with the Skywatcher and a little bit higher, I believe at 47 and three quarters inches. It has basically its own built-in pier extension. I can raise it up like that. And I can still put the pier extension on top of this if I wanted. I mean, that would totally fit, right? See? So this pier extension wasn't made only for the Skywatcher tripod kit. This will obviously fit all other tripods. 
An option I recommend to this flimsy little accessory tray that went on the Skywatcher tripod is to instead get one of these rock bags. These are much more flexible. You can use them on about any tripod. To me, this is a much better option than the little tray that came with the Skywatcher mount kit. Uh, I think these bags are more durable. Uh, you have more room. I like that it sags in the middle. Now it's technically meant to hold rocks to weigh down your tripod, but you know I will use these just to hold random accessories. Uh, they're really convenient, really cheap, and I think just overall more useful than that little tray is. So you're probably wondering, do I regret buying the mount kit? No, actually I don't. And the reason is, because I bought it as an open box clearance from B&H for 599. dollars So it actually made more sense to buy that than to buy the motor unit alone at $640. Now I just have to store the tripod in the garage until I find some sort of random use for it. I can usually find uses for most of my gear, no matter how cheap it is, but for going out and using the Skywatcher GTI, I won't be using the tripod. I really don't like it. Now that you know how I feel about the tripod, let's talk a little bit about the motor itself. Now, this won't be a tutorial about how to actually set it up and use it in the field. I am still ramping up and learning it myself, but I'll share with you some initial observations. Let's start by talking about this little cap right here. Every single reviewer, has agreed, and I agree with them, that this is terrible. It is cheap, it falls off really easy. What I did was I had this little tether from some camera accessory kit I got, and you've probably seen these before. This is a strap that goes around a camera lens, and then you put the little adhesive part on the lens cap. It's to help you not lose your lens caps. I've actually never had a use for these, I hate them. However, this has been a great use. So even when this does fall off, which it does very easily, it's going to be a lot harder for me to lose this. So just a little tip, find like a little tether. Uh, it's going to save you a lot of frustration. Since we're talking about the polar scope, let me share with you a couple hiccups that I had to work through while learning how to use this device. So the first one is the illumination within the polar scope. The directions specify that you use the app and you turn on the illumination within the scope so you can see. Now, I did that the first time and I couldn't see anything. So I went looking around Reddit, asking other users, reading old posts. Turns out others have had the issue. Now, what some recommend you do is kill the app, restart it, reconnect to the Skywatcher, and it might work. The other approach that is recommended, and one that seemed to work pretty well for me, was to not take the little slider on the app all the way to 100%. Uh, bring it up to like 60, 70%, you know, back down a little bit. Verify looking in the scope that you see the illumination changing, and then you can take it all the way to 100. So apparently, for whatever reason, taking the slider from zero immediately to 100 doesn't seem to work for whatever reason. But since then, I have not had an issue and the illumination seems to work. The second hiccup is focusing the polar scope itself. So after I figured out the illumination issue, it lit up, I looked in, and I couldn't really make anything out. It was really, really, really blurry. I started messing with the eyepiece. Now I watched probably half a dozen videos about how to set this up and none of them mention adjusting this, this dial, this knob right here on the eyepiece. I noticed that it was tightened, you know, clockwise tightened all the way up. So I very carefully started to loosen it, turn it counterclockwise. And I turned and I turned, being careful because I was very, very nervous it would fall out and I would lose it in the dark. And I turned it and turned it and then I noticed the scope coming into focus. So you might or you might not have to adjust this so you can see the scope on the inside. I certainly had to make a big adjustment before I could use it. 
Now, a feature that a lot of users seem to like is that you can actually install batteries into the unit, making this a little more portable. And I can definitely see their point of view on this. However, I do find this battery compartment to be weird, a little squirrely to work with, to be completely honest. And I won't be hiking with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to externally power this. So what I do bring with me a lot when I go out is this Jackery 300. I power a lot of my devices externally with this. I have this clamp that I put one end on the handle like so. And then what I do is I actually just tighten it onto a tripod leg. This holds up just fine. I mean, I've done time lapses all day long with it on a tripod just like this. I've never had an issue with it falling off and it keeps it off the ground because sometimes the ground is a little bit wet or the cables, the cords that I'm using aren't that long. So this has worked out really well in the past and this is how I'm going to externally power my Skywatcher GTI. With a device like the Skywatcher, you can't use your typical tripod plates. You have to use something like this. And we're talking pretty much any brand of Vixen style dovetail plate, which is this right here, this bottom piece. Now, this one is from uh, newer, newer, newer. I still don't know how to pronounce that. And I have a lot of their products, but I got this one from new newer. It is nine inches, which I think is 230 millimeters, if I remember correctly. Oh, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Uh, you can actually get this in different sizes. I don't think I really needed one this long. You can get them shorter. A little hiccup I ran into was the screws that it came with. When I tried to screw my Lumix S5 onto this, the screws it came with were a little bit too long. They bottomed out in the quarter inch female adapter on my camera. They bottomed out before the camera was tight to the plate. So it just twisted around. So what I had to do, and I had this lying around, it's a very cheap uh, tripod plate, but I get a lot of use out of this. Uh, I'll put links in the description. I put this on and then I'm just going to attach my cameras to this plate. I have a plate on a plate, but yeah, whatever. But this is how I'm going to be mounting my cameras. Now I'm going to start with probably an 85 to get the feel of it. And then I'm going to use a 70 to 200. And then I do have a 500 Prime. I think once I really know what I'm doing, I'll try the 500 Prime. And I have a 60 to 600. It's a slower lens, but I'm actually considering trying that out. It might not work too well, but you know what? I love experimentation. Uh, anyways, I just want to share with you my initial thoughts and some impressions about this device and some of the accessories. To summarize, I don't think the mount kit is worth the extra $59. What I think you should do is take that $59 and maybe a little bit more and go on Facebook Marketplace. Find a used deal from someone. I, I find great deals all the time. You will probably be able to find something more portable and more durable than the tripod that came with this GTI kit. I guarantee it. Find a way to tether the polar scope cap. It will fall off. It's not an if, it's a matter of when. Trust me, it will happen. Remember that you might have to adjust the focus on the polar scope itself. I'm guessing others didn't have to. That's why they didn't talk about it in their videos. I certainly had to, but maybe that's because my eyes are going bad. I'm actually going to an optometrist tomorrow. Um, also, the illumination. If you don't see illumination, try restarting the app, reconnecting, uh, try not going from zero to 100, maybe just slide the little, move the slider in smaller increments and see if the illumination kicks on. That's what worked for me. And finally, if you're just mounting cameras, you probably don't need a nine inch plate like what I got. There are smaller options, but I don't know. I, I like the extra space that might come in handy. So I just decided to keep it. If you appreciate the content of this video or any other video on my channel, please don't subscribe. Don't smash the like button. Don't smash the notification bell. 
what you can do is go down to your local animal shelter and make a donation of either food, money, blankets, whatever they need. I will appreciate that a lot more than any subscriptions. Honestly, I don't care. I do this for fun. Well, that's all I have for this video. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you again next time. Ah, f me running. A little bit of an outtake here. <laughs> I was doing a take to talk about the rock bag. And as I was velcroing it onto my legs, something in my back pulled. I really hate getting old. <laughs> oh my goodness. You see, I used to hurt my back doing real work, right? Landscaping, um, BMX bikes. Now I just hurt my back putting bags on tripod legs. Oh, I hate getting old.